So this match was so ungodly great. And it's one of those things like like because I was taking notes on my phone here again, obviously, because I hadn't I couldn't I couldn't tweet. But like halfway through, not knowing it was halfway through, by the way, because it was like 15 minutes in, I started writing down everything I loved about the match. And then it just kept going and did more great stuff. Believe it or not, this was only a 22 minute match. Okay. It felt like it went an hour. This felt like a in a good way. Yeah, this in a good like a way. War. And the fans, the fans did the uh, uh, fight forever chant, which normally I hate, but in this case, I was all for it. Yes. I was like, "You guys can fight forever for all I care. Like, stop killing each other." And the pile drivers, uh, these uh, these Lucha brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't take pile drivers from them. <laughs> you know, you want to take a pile driver from is a, is a big fat guy with thick legs. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Not not a skinny guy. That doesn't work out right. You land on your actual head. <laughs> and Matt landed on his head from a top rope destroyer, which thank God they didn't come off the top of the cage. And then Nick landed on his neck from the, the pile driver at the very end. So so both of them were were in bed all day the next day because of their necks and everything else on their bodies. And it was because of these pile drivers. Which like when I was well, I remember when I was wrestling, and granted, I didn't wrestle a lot of fat guys with thick legs, but, uh, you know, everyone was always worried about the pile driver, and I was like, the pile driver's safe. Whoever gets hurt on a pile driver? Like, remember Tim would do the pile driver off the apron to the floor? Mm -hmm. He never hurt anybody with that pile driver. Tim always driver. took care of everybody, yes. And, like, the, the gimmick with the pile driver was you never actually landed on your head. No. You, the, nobody, you know, the famous Hulk Hogan pile driver from The Undertaker in that book, he was 10 feet off the ground. He sold like he hurt his neck. But, I mean, you know, the pile driver was a total gimmick. Now it's not a gimmick anymore. Now these people are getting actual injuries from pile drivers. So hopefully they're all right. They were, they were beat up, but I think those were the only... Oh, and then uh, there was uh, uh, Penta, who needed seven staples for his, uh, his cut, mm -hmm. which okay. was a blade job. What? And... Uh, I also believe, a uh, trivia fact, that this match was the first time that Nick Jackson ever bladed in his entire career. Really? He's bled many times, but it's always been hard away. <laughs> this is the first time he ever cut himself. I don't know if it's a good thing or not. <laughs> yes. So this match absolutely ruled. and So it... in fact, his father almost bladed before Nick. Because remember when his father wanted to cut himself in that angle? Yep. And they talked him out of it? Yes. Yeah, with Jericho. Yeah. Yes, yes. So this match absolutely ruled, and it was much, much more than just a spectacular parade of spots, although it certainly was that as well. Now, they never gave us the rules in the arena. I don't know what they said on TV or not, but I don't believe this is actually an Escape the Rules cage match. It appeared to be pin or submission only. Yes. And they did not do tags because they're not stupid. <laughs> so they're just in the... The bell rings. All four dudes, all four dudes in the ring are in the ring. The Lucha Brothers got their big entrance with the the headdresses and the dancers and the live music. And the Bucks, of course, got the Bucks entrance. And the match begins. The Bucks immediately try to flee and escape, not because it's the rules, but because they are cowards. And they are pulled back in for a bunch of stuff. And then no one climbed the cage again until the very end. So they planted the seed of doing a big spot off the top of the cage, and then just left it there until it was time. The Lucha Brothers are just kicking ass for probably six, seven minutes until they have one of the Bucks in the middle of the ring. They go for a sandwich super kick, but the Buck dodges. They super kick each other, and each man sells his feet. And you wonder why that's such a big deal? Because their comeback began when the Young Bucks tried the BTE trigger, but one of these guys dodged. They went knee to knee, and they sold their knees. It's all coming full circle. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. So they're having this spectacular high-flying match with guys flying into the cage over and over again. And even though there's four dudes in one ring with no tags, no one ever got in anyone's way. And, of course, it's a cage match. That was incredible, by the way. Yeah. This cage match, this match, when you think about this being the greatest cage match of all time, this match had every possible handicap for a Lucha Brothers versus Young Bucks match. You can't fly to the outside. You can't do any dives. Can't do a hot tag. You can't do heat. You can't do a hot tag. Yep. It's literally a 22-minute tornado match where they agreed to only do one thing off the top of the cage. Yeah. No interference, thank God. 
I mean, when you think about the handicaps that they faced in this match, and then you think about the quality of this match, it is it is even more incredible than it is just watching it. So no one can interfere, and in fact no one did, but Brandon Cutler was able with a mighty heave to throw a duffel bar up over the cage into the ring. A duffel bag. Duffel bag, excuse me, duffel bag. And uh, the Bucks pull out a fancy tennis shoe with thumbtacks on the sole. And Matt puts the, the, the tennis shoe on. He's going to kick Phoenix in the face. And Penta, as evil as he is, that guy's still his brother. He decides to take the bullet. So he gets kicked in the face. This is where the blood started. And that set up, actually, I believe, the BTE trigger spot. And then we just had a crazy-ass collection of four-way spots. We're all just all in a circle. And one guy does a kip, kip up and super kick. The other guy does a kip up and super kick over and over again. And here's why it's really, really, really awesome. They were going to do a cage dive. Of course, they were going to do a cage dive. You look at the top of the cage. There's platforms you can stand on. Clearly, this cage was meant to be climbed and jumped off of. So the Lucha Brothers, they've done everything. Bucks have done everything. Lucha Brothers have done everything. The Lucha Brothers go for their uh, foot stomp, package power driver combo. And they hit this move, but the Bucks kick out. Well, there's only one thing left to try then. Phoenix, uh, uh, Pentum grabs his brother Phoenix and points to the sky. And Phoenix looks up, and he points up there. And the crowd says, it's time, it's time. They get into it. So there was a reason for Phoenix to climb up there and do this move. Because he tried to do the same thing off the top. It wasn't good enough. He had to raise the stakes. He wasn't just showing off. He wasn't seeking a moment. He wasn't a thrill seeker or a crowd pleaser. He was trying desperately, risking life and limb to try to win this match. So he goes up there. Of course, he did not do the foot stomp. He did a dive on all three dudes, wiped them all out. And that was the biggest spot of the match. The guy falling 20 feet out of the sky was, in fact, the coolest thing they were going to do. They weren't going to top this. They jumped to their feet. They hit one of the Bucks with their double pile driver thing. Phoenix tackles Buck A. Penta pins Buck B. New World Tag Team Champions, the Lucha Bros. Place goes nuts. You see Penta's weeping daughter emerges from the crowd to hug her bloody father. Just a, a, emotional moment for everyone. The, the Bucks' plans were finally foiled. They were finally beaten. Everyone was so happy. And maybe the greatest cage match of all time. Maybe the best match of any kind of 2021. For God's sake, if you have not watched this match, go watch it immediately. Yeah, there's a lot of things to think about that uh, I, I mean, they may have said them on commentary or whatever. But clearly the story of this match was all of those different Young Bucks matches where there was interference and the elite running and everything like that. It was all to build towards the big, the big cage match. Nobody can get in. And nobody can get out. And they were determined to do the cage match right. There's not going to be interference. There's not going to be somebody getting into the cage. They're not going to slam the cage door on somebody's head. They're not going to do all the bullshit. They were just going to have a fantastic tag team match inside a steel cage. And I guess they got to the building the day before, and they started climbing the cage, and they were like, this cage is really high. <laughs> So we're not doing anything off the top of the cage. They ended up doing the one with Phoenix. So, by the way, in the post-show press conference, somebody asked Phoenix. They were like, they said, Lucha Brothers, you ever, uh, I think it was like a little kid asked this question. They were like, do you ever get scared before you do a move? You ever, you ever think about it when you're going up there and get nervous? And Phoenix goes, nope. <laughs> I mean, if there was any doubt, it has been <laughs> confirmed. In fact, they don't care. So, yeah, they just had a great match, and I watched it there. I was in the second row, and when it was over, I was like, "This." they went in wanting to do the greatest cage match of all time. When it was over, I thought, it's the greatest cage match I've ever seen. It's one of the greatest matches mm. I've ever seen. It was so awesome, and the crowd, like, for 22 minutes, they were just going crazy for this match. Yeah. And they never, they never lost a crowd. And, you know, one of the reasons the old-timers talk about too many moves is, well, the theory is you do too many moves and you lose the crowd. You're just doing too much shit. Well, they did all these moves and they never lost the crowd. No. The crowd just kept building throughout the match. They, they, they hit the peak and they went home. God damn, what a great match. Just fantastic. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, 
you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.